A witch hunt or witch purge is a search for people labeled witches or evidence of witchcraft, often involving moral panic or mass hysteria. The classical period of witch hunts in early modern Europe and colonial North America took place in the early modern period or about 1450 to 1750, spanning the upheavals of the Reformation and the Thirty Years' War, resulting in an estimated 35,000 to 100,000 executions. Including illegal and summary executions it is estimated 200,000 or more witches were tortured, burnt or hanged in the Western world from 1500 until around 1800. The last executions of people convicted as witches in Europe took place in the 18th century. In other regions, like Africa and Asia, contemporary witch hunts have been reported from Sub-Saharan Africa and Papua New Guinea and official legislation against witchcraft is still found in Saudi Arabia and Cameroon today. In current language, witch hunt metaphorically means an investigation usually conducted with much publicity, supposedly to uncover subversive activity, disloyalty and so on, but really to weaken political opposition. <laughs> Anthropological causes The wide distribution of the practice of witch hunts in geographically and culturally separated societies Europe, Africa, India, New Guinea since the 1960s has triggered interest in the anthropological background of this behavior. The belief in magic and divination, and attempts to use magic to influence personal well-being to increase life, win love, etc. are human cultural universals. Belief in witchcraft has been shown to have similarities in societies throughout the world. It presents a framework to explain the occurrence of otherwise random misfortunes such as sickness or death, and the witch sorcerer provides an image of evil. Reports on indigenous practices in the Americas, Asia and Africa collected during the early modern age of exploration have been taken to suggest that not just the belief in witchcraft but also the periodic outbreak of witch hunts are a human cultural universal. One study finds that witchcraft beliefs are associated with antisocial attitudes, lower levels of trust, charitable giving and group participation. Another study finds that income shocks caused by extreme rainfall lead to a large increase in the murder of witches. In Tanzania. Topic History. Topic Ancient Near East. Punishment for malevolent sorcery is addressed in the earliest law codes, which were preserved in both ancient Egypt and Babylonia, where it played a conspicuous part. The Code of Hammurabi, 18th century BC short chronology, prescribes that. If a man has put a spell upon another man and it is not yet justified, he upon whom the spell is laid shall go to the holy river, into the holy river shall he plunge. If the holy river overcome him and he is drowned, the man who put the spell upon him shall take possession of his house. If the holy river declares him innocent and he remains unharmed the man who laid the spell shall be put to death. He that plunged into the river shall take possession of the house of him who laid the spell upon him. Classical antiquity In classical Athens, no laws concerning magic survive. However, cases concerning the harmful effects of pharmaca, an ambiguous term that might mean poison, medicine, or magical drug, do survive, especially those where the drug caused injury or death. Antiphon's speech, against the stepmother for poisoning, Tells of the case of a woman accused of plotting to murder her husband with a pharmacon. A slave had previously been executed for the crime, but the son of the victim claimed that the death had been arranged by his stepmother. The most detailed account of a trial for witchcraft in classical Greece is the story of Theorus of Lemnos, who was executed along with her children some time before 338 BC, supposedly for casting incantations and using harmful drugs. In 451 BC, the Twelve Tables of Roman Law had provisions against evil incantations and spells intended to damage cereal crops. In 331 BC, 170 women were executed as witches in the context of an epidemic illness. Livy emphasizes that this was a scale of persecution without precedent in Rome. In 186 BC, the Roman Senate issued a decree severely restricting the Bacchanalia, ecstatic rites celebrated in honor of Dionysus. Livy records that this persecution was because, "...there was nothing wicked, nothing flagitious, that had not been practiced among them." 
Consequent to the ban, in 184 BC, about 2,000 people were executed for witchcraft beneficium, and in 182–180 BC another 3,000 executions took place, again triggered by the outbreak of an epidemic. There is no way to verify the figures reported by Roman historians, but if they are taken at face value, the scale of the witch hunts in the Roman Republic in relation to the population of Italy at the time far exceeded anything that took place during the classical witch craze in early modern Europe. Persecution of witches continued in the Roman Empire until the late 4th century AD and abated only after the introduction of Christianity as the Roman state religion in the 390s. The Lex Cornelia de Sicaris et Venificis promulgated by Lucius Cornelius Sulla in 81 BC became an important source of late medieval and early modern European law on witchcraft. This law banned the trading and possession of harmful drugs and poisons, possession of magical books and other occult paraphernalia. Strabo, Gaius Messinus and Cassius Dio all reiterate the traditional Roman opposition against sorcery and divination, and Tacitus used the term religio superstitio to class these outlawed observances. Emperor Augustus strengthened legislation aimed at curbing these practices, for instance in 31 BC, by burning over 2,000 magical books in Rome, except for certain portions of the hallowed Sibylline books. In AD 354, while Tiberius Claudius was emperor, 45 men and 85 women, who were all suspected of sorcery, were executed. The Hebrew Bible condemns sorcery. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 10 to 12 states, "No one shall be found among you who makes a son or daughter pass through fire, who practices divination, or is a soothsayer, or an augur, or a sorcerer, or one that casts spells, or who consults ghosts or spirits, or who seeks oracles from the dead." For whoever does these things is abhorrent to the Lord. And Exodus chapter 22 verse 18 prescribes, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Tales like that of 1 Samuel chapter 28, reporting how Saul hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards, out of the land, suggest that in practice sorcery could at least lead to exile. In the Judean Second Temple period, Rabbi Simeon ben Shittach in the 1st century BC is reported to have sentenced to death 80 women who had been charged with witchcraft on a single day in Ashkelon. Later the women's relatives took revenge by bringing reportedly false witnesses against Simeon's son and causing him to be executed in turn. <laughs> Late Antiquity The 6th century AD Getica of Jordanes records a persecution and expulsion of witches among the Goths in a mythical account of the origin of the Huns. The ancient fabled King Philomer is said to have found among his people certain witches, whom he called in his native tongue Haluruni. Suspecting these women, he expelled them from the midst of his race and compelled them to wander in solitary exile afar from his army. There the unclean spirits, who beheld them as they wandered through the wilderness, bestowed their embraces upon them and begat this savage race, which dwelt at first in the swamps, a stunted, foul and puny tribe, scarcely human, and having no language save one which bore but slight resemblance to human speech. <laughs> <laughs> Middle Ages <laughs> <laughs> Christianization in the early Middle Ages The councils of Elvira 306, Ancyra 314, and Trullo 692 imposed certain ecclesiastical penances for devil worship. This mild approach represented the view of the Church for many centuries. The general desire of the Catholic Church's clergy to check fanaticism about witchcraft and necromancy is shown in the decrees of the Council of Paderborn, which, in 785, explicitly outlawed condemning people as witches and condemned to death anyone who burnt a witch. The Lombard Code of 643 states, Let nobody presume to kill a foreign serving maid or female servant as a witch, for it is not possible, nor ought to be believed by Christian minds. This conforms to the teachings of the Canon Episcopi of circa 900 AD alleged to date from 314 AD, which, following the thoughts of Augustine of Hippo, stated that witchcraft did not exist and that to teach that it was a reality was, itself, false and heterodox teaching. Other examples include an Irish synod in 800, and a sermon by Agobard of Lyons 810, King Kalman Coloman of Hungary, in Decree 57 of his first legislative book published in 1100, banned witch hunting because he said, "...witches do not exist." The "...decretum," 
of Burchard, Bishop of Worms about 1020, and especially its 19th book, often known separately as the Corrector, is another work of great importance. Burchard was writing against the superstitious belief in magical potions, for instance, that may produce impotence or abortion. These were also condemned by several church fathers. But he altogether rejected the possibility of many of the alleged powers with which witches were popularly credited. Such, for example, were nocturnal riding through the air, the changing of a person's disposition from love to hate, the control of thunder, rain, and sunshine, the transformation of a man into an animal, the intercourse of incubi and succubi with human beings and other such superstitions. Not only the attempt to practice such things, but the very belief in their possibility, is treated by Burchard as false and superstitious. Pope Gregory VII, in 1080, wrote to King Harold III of Denmark forbidding witches to be put to death upon presumption of their having caused storms or failure of crops or pestilence. Neither were these the only examples of an effort to prevent unjust suspicion to which such poor creatures might be exposed. On many different occasions, ecclesiastics who spoke with authority did their best to disabuse the people of their superstitious belief in witchcraft. This, for instance, is the general purport of the book, Contra Insulsum Vulgi Opinionim de Grandine et Tonitruis, against the foolish belief of the common sort concerning hail and thunder, written by Agobard, d. 841, Archbishop of Lyons. A comparable situation in Russia is suggested in a sermon by Serapion of Vladimir written in 1274 fifths, where the popular superstition of witches causing crop failures is denounced. Early secular laws against witchcraft include those promulgated by King Athelstan 924 to 939. And we have ordained respecting witchcrafts and libacks read libac sorcery and morthdades murder mortal sin. If any one should be thereby killed, and he could not deny it, that he be liable in his life. But if he will deny it, and at threefold ordeal shall be guilty, that he be one hundred twenty days in prison, and after that let kindred take him out, and give to the king one hundred twenty shillings, and pay the wer to his kindred, and enter into bore for him, that he evermore desist from the like. In some prosecutions for witchcraft, torture permitted by the Roman civil law apparently took place. However, Pope Nicholas I 866, prohibited the use of torture altogether, and a similar decree may be found in the Pseudo-Isidorian Decretals. <laughs> Later Middle Ages The manuals of the Roman Catholic Inquisition remained highly skeptical of witch accusations, although there was sometimes an overlap between accusations of heresy and of witchcraft, particularly when, in the 13th century, the newly formed Inquisition was commissioned to deal with the Cathars of southern France, whose teachings were charged with containing an admixture of witchcraft and magic. Although it has been proposed that the witch hunt developed in Europe from the early 14th century, after the Cathars and the Templar Knights were suppressed, this hypothesis has been rejected independently by two historians Kohn 1975, Kiekhefer 1976. In 1258, Pope Alexander IV declared a canon that alleged witchcraft was not to be investigated by the Church. Although Pope John XXII had later authorized the Inquisition to prosecute sorcerers in 1320, inquisitorial courts rarely dealt with witchcraft save incidentally when investigating heterodoxy. In the case of the Madonna Oriente, the Inquisition of Milan was not sure what to do with two women who in 1384 confessed to have participated the society around Signora Oriente or Diana. Through their confessions, both of them conveyed the traditional folk beliefs of white magic. The women were accused again in 1390, and condemned by the Inquisitor. They were eventually executed by the secular arm. In a notorious case in 1425, Herman II, Count of Celia, accused his daughter in law Veronica of Decenis of witchcraft, and, though she was acquitted by the court, he had her drowned. The accusations of witchcraft are, in this case, considered to have been a pretext for Herman to get rid of an unsuitable match, Veronica being born into the lower nobility and thus unworthy of his son. A Catholic figure who preached against witchcraft was popular Franciscan preacher Bernardino of Siena 1380-1444. Bernardino's sermons reveal both a phenomenon of superstitious practices and an overreaction against them by the common people. However, it is clear that Bernardino had in mind not merely the use of spells and enchantments and such like fulleras but much more serious crimes, chiefly murder and infanticide. 
This is clear from his much quoted sermon of 1427, in which he says, One of them told and confessed, without any pressure, that she had killed thirty children by bleeding them, and she confessed more, saying she had killed her own son. Answer me, does it really seem to you that someone who has killed twenty or thirty little children in such a way has done so well that when finally they are accused before the Signoria you should go to their aid and beg mercy for them? Topic. Transition to the early modern witch hunts The resurgence of witch hunts at the end of the medieval period, taking place with at least partial support or at least tolerance on the part of the Church, was accompanied with a number of developments in Christian doctrine, for example the recognition of the existence of witchcraft as a form of satanic influence and its classification as a heresy. As Renaissance occultism gained traction among the educated classes, the belief in witchcraft, which in the medieval period had been part of the folk religion of the uneducated rural population at best, was incorporated into an increasingly comprehensive theology of Satan as the ultimate source of all maleficium. These doctrinal shifts were completed in the mid-15th century, specifically in the wake of the Council of Basel and centered on the Duchy of Savoy in the Western Alps, leading to an early series of witch trials by both secular and ecclesiastical courts in the second half of the 15th century. In 1484, Pope Innocent VIII issued Summus Desiderantes Effectibus, a papal bull authorizing the correcting, imprisoning, punishing, and chastising of devil worshippers who have slain infants among other crimes. He did so at the request of Inquisitor Heinrich Kramer, who had been refused permission by the local bishops in Germany to investigate. However, historians such as Ludwig von Pastor insist that the bull neither allowed anything new nor was necessarily binding on Catholic consciences. Three years later in 1487, Kramer published the notorious Malleus Maleficarum lit. Hammer against the evildoers which, because of the newly invented printing presses, enjoyed a wide readership. The book was soon banned by the Church in 1490, and Kramer was censured, but it was nevertheless reprinted in 14 editions by 1520 and became unduly influential in the secular courts. In 1538, the Spanish Inquisition cautioned its members not to believe what the Malleus said, even when it presented apparently firm evidence. <laughs> Early modern Europe The witch trials in early modern Europe came in waves and then subsided. There were trials in the 15th and early 16th centuries, but then the witch scare went into decline, before becoming a major issue again and peaking in the 17th century, particularly during the Thirty Years' War. What had previously been a belief that some people possessed supernatural abilities which were sometimes used to protect the people now became a sign of a pact between the people with supernatural abilities and the devil. To justify the killings, Protestant Christianity and its proxy secular institutions deemed witchcraft as being associated to wild satanic ritual parties in which there was much naked dancing and cannibalistic infanticide. It was also seen as heresy for going against the first of the Ten Commandments, You shall have no other gods before me, or as violating majesty, in this case referring to the divine majesty, not the worldly. Further scripture was also frequently cited, especially the Exodus decree that, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, Exodus chapter 22 verse 18, which many supported. Witch hunts were seen across early modern Europe, but the most significant area of witch hunting in modern Europe is often considered to be central and southern Germany. Germany was a late starter in terms of the numbers of trials, compared to other regions of Europe. Witch hunts first appeared in large numbers in southern France and Switzerland during the 14th and 15th centuries. The peak years of witch hunts in southwest Germany were from 1561 to 1670. The first major persecution in Europe, when witches were caught, tried, convicted, and burned in the imperial lordship of Weisensteig in southwestern Germany, is recorded in 1563 in a pamphlet called, True and Horrifying Deeds of 63 Witches. Witchcraft persecution spread to all areas of Europe, including Scotland and the northernmost periphery of Europe in northern Norway. Learned European ideas about witchcraft, demonological ideas, strongly influenced the hunt of witches in the north. In Denmark, the burning of witches increased following the Reformation of 1536. Christian IV of Denmark, in particular, encouraged this practice, and hundreds of people were convicted of witchcraft and burnt. 
In the district of Finnmark, northern Norway, severe witchcraft trials took place during the period 1600–1692. A memorial of international format, Stylenset Memorial, has been built to commemorate the victims of the Finnmark witchcraft trials. In England, the Witchcraft Act of 1542 regulated the penalties for witchcraft. In the North Berwick Witch Trials in Scotland, over 70 people were accused of witchcraft on account of bad weather when James VI of Scotland, who shared the Danish king's interest in witch trials, sailed to Denmark in 1590 to meet his betrothed Anne of Denmark. The Pendle Witch Trials of 1612 are among the most famous witch trials in English history. In England, witch hunting would reach its apex in 1644 to 1647 due to the work of Matthew Hopkins. Although operating without an official parliament commission, Hopkins, calling himself Witchfinder General, and his accomplices charged hefty fees to towns during the English Civil War. Hopkins' witch hunting spree was brief but significant. 300 convictions and deaths are attributed to his work. Hopkins wrote a book on his methods, describing his fortuitous beginnings as a witch hunter, the methods used to extract confessions, and the tests he employed to test the accused, stripping them naked to find the witch's mark, the swimming test, and pricking the skin. The swimming test, which included throwing a witch into water strapped to a chair to see if she floated, was discontinued in 1645 due to a legal challenge. The 1647 book, The Discovery of Witches, was soon influential in legal texts. The book was used in the American colonies as early as May 1647, when Margaret Jones was executed for witchcraft in Massachusetts, the first of 17 people executed for witchcraft in the colonies from 1647 to 1663. Witch hunts in North America began about the time of Hopkins. In 1645, 46 years before the notorious Salem witch trials, Springfield, Massachusetts experienced America's first accusations of witchcraft when husband and wife Hugh and Mary Parsons accused each other of witchcraft. In America's first witch trial, Hugh was found innocent, while Mary was acquitted of witchcraft but she was still sentenced to be hanged as punishment for the death of her child. She died in prison. About 80 people throughout England's Massachusetts Bay Colony were accused of practicing witchcraft. Thirteen women and two men were executed in a witch hunt that occurred throughout New England and lasted from 1645 to 1663. The Salem Witch Trials followed in 1692-93. Once a case was brought to trial, the prosecutors hunted for accomplices. Magic was not considered to be wrong because it failed, but because it worked effectively for the wrong reasons. Witchcraft was a normal part of everyday life. Witches were often called for, along with religious ministers, to help the ill or to deliver a baby. They held positions of spiritual power in their communities. When something went wrong, no one questioned the ministers or the power of the witchcraft. Instead, they questioned whether the witch intended to inflict harm or not. Current scholarly estimates of the number of people executed for witchcraft vary between about 40,000 and 100,000. The total number of witch trials in Europe which are known to have ended in executions is around 12,000. Prominent contemporaneous critics of witch hunts included John Francesco Ponzinibbio, Florida, 1520, Johannes Weir, 1515 to 1588, Reginald Scott, 1538 to 1599, Cornelius Luce, 1546 to 1595, Anton Pretorius, 1560 to 1613, Alonso Salazar y Frias, 1564 to 1636, Friedrich Spee, 1591 to 1635, and Balthasar Becker, 1634 to 1698. Among the largest and most notable of these trials were the Trier Witch Trials. Trials 1581 to 1593, the Fulda Witch Trials 1603 to 1606, the Würzburg Witch Trial 1626 to 1631, and the Bamberg Witch Trials 1626 to 1631. Topic: Execution statistics. Modern scholarly estimates place the total number of executions for witchcraft in the 300-year period of European witch hunts in the five digits, mostly at roughly between 40,000 and 50,000 see table below for details, but some estimate there were 200,000 to 500,000 executed for witchcraft, and others estimated 1 million or more. The majority of those accused were from the lower economic classes in European society, although in rarer cases high-ranking individuals were accused as well. On the basis of this evidence, Scar and Callow asserted that the 
Typical witch was the wife or widow of an agricultural laborer or small tenant farmer, and she was well known for a quarrelsome and aggressive nature. While it appears to be the case that the clear majority of victims in Germany were women, in other parts of Europe the witch hunts targeted primarily men, thus in Iceland 92% of the accused were men, in Estonia 60%, and in Moscow two-thirds of those accused were male. At one point during the Würzburg trials of 1629, children made up 60% of those accused, although this had declined to 17% by the end of the year. The claim that millions of witches often Nine million witches were killed in Europe occasionally found in popular literature as spurious, and ultimately due to a 1791 pamphlet by Gottfried Christian Voigt. <laughs> End of European witch hunts in the 18th century In England and Scotland between 1542 and 1735, a series of witchcraft acts enshrined into law the punishment often with death, sometimes with incarceration of individuals practicing or claiming to practice witchcraft and magic. The last executions for witchcraft in England had taken place in 1682, when Temperance Lloyd, Mary Trembles, and Susanna Edwards were executed at Exeter. In 1711, Joseph Addison published an article in the highly respected The Spectator Journal no. 117 criticizing the irrationality and social injustice in treating elderly and feeble women dubbed Mall White as witches. Jane Wenham was among the last subjects of a typical witch trial in England in 1712, but was pardoned after her conviction and set free. Kate Nevin was hunted for three weeks and eventually suffered death by faggot and fire at Monsey in Perthshire, Scotland in 1715. Janet Horne was executed for witchcraft in Scotland in 1727. The final act of 1735 led to prosecution for fraud rather than witchcraft since it was no longer believed that the individuals had actual supernatural powers or traffic with Satan. The 1735 Act continued to be used until the 1940s to prosecute individuals such as spiritualists and gypsies. The Act was finally repealed in 1951. The last execution of a witch in the Dutch Republic was probably in 1613. In Denmark, this took place in 1693 with the execution of Anna Pals. In other parts of Europe, the practice died down later. In France the last person to be executed for witchcraft was Louis Deberaz in 1745. In Germany the last death sentence was that of Anna Schwegelin in Kempton in 1775 although not carried out. The last known official witch trial was the Dorichau witch trial in Poland in 1783. In 1793, two unnamed women were executed in proceedings of dubious legitimacy in Poznan, Poland. Anna Goldie was executed in Glarus, Switzerland in 1782 and Barbara Z. Dunk in Prussia in 1811. Both women have been identified as the last women executed for witchcraft in Europe, but in both cases, the official verdict did not mention witchcraft, as this had ceased to be recognized as a criminal offense. <inaudible> <inaudible> India There is no documented evidence of witch hunting in India before 1792. The earliest evidence of witch hunts in India can be found in the Santhal witch trials in 1792. In the Singham district of the Chahotanagpur division in British India, not only were those accused of being witches murdered, but also those related to the accused to ensure that they won't avenge the deaths Roy Chowdhury 1958-88. The Chahotanagpur region was majorly populated by an Adivasi population called the Santhals. The existence of witches was a belief central to the Santhals. Witches were feared and were supposed to be engaged in anti-social activities. They were also supposed to have the power to kill people by feeding on their entrails, and causing fevers in cattle among other evils. Therefore, according to the Adivasi population, the cure to their disease and sickness was the elimination of these witches who were seen as the cause. The practice of witch hunt among Santhals was more brutal than that in Europe. Unlike Europe, where witches were strangulated before being burnt, the Santhals forced them to eat human excreta and drink blood before throwing them into the flames. The British banned the persecution of witches in Gujarat, Rajasthan, and Chahotanagpur in the 1840s to 1850s. They saw the practice as barbaric and tried to dismantle the belief in witchcraft by providing medical facilities. However, they underestimated the extent to which the belief was socially embedded. 
Despite the ban, very few cases were reported as witch hunting was not seen as a crime. The Santhals believed that the ban in fact allowed the witches to flourish. Thus, the effect of the ban was contrary to what the British had intended. During 1857-58, there was a surge in witch hunting. This can be viewed as a mode of resistance to the British rule as part of the larger revolt of 1857. Modern cases Witch hunts still occur today in societies where belief in magic is prevalent. In most cases, these are instances of lynching and burnings, reported with some regularity from much of sub-Saharan Africa, from rural North India and from Papua New Guinea. In addition, there are some countries that have legislation against the practice of sorcery. The only country where witchcraft remains legally punishable by death is Saudi Arabia. Witch hunts in modern times are continuously reported by the UNHCR of the UNO as a massive violation of human rights. Most of the accused are women and children but can also be elderly people or marginalized groups of the community such as albinos and the HIV infected. These victims are often considered burdens to the community, and as a result are often driven out, starved to death, or killed violently, sometimes by their own families in acts of social cleansing. The causes of witch hunts include poverty, epidemics, social crises and lack of education. The leader of the witch hunt, often a prominent figure in the community or a witch doctor, may also gain economic benefit by charging for an exorcism or by selling body parts of the murdered. <laughs> Sub-Saharan Africa In many societies of sub-Saharan Africa, the fear of witches drives periodic witch hunts during which specialist witch finders identify suspects, with death by mob often the result. Countries particularly affected by this phenomenon include South Africa, Cameroon, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Gambia, Ghana, Kenya, Sierra Leone, Tanzania, and Zambia. Witch hunts against children were reported by the BBC in 1999 in the Congo and in Tanzania, where the government responded to attacks on women accused of being witches for having red eyes. A lawsuit was launched in 2001 in Ghana, where witch hunts are also common, by a woman accused of being a witch. Witch hunts in Africa are often led by relatives seeking the property of the accused victim. Audrey I. Richards, in the journal Africa, relates in 1935 an instance when a new wave of witchfinders, the Bamukapi, appeared in the villages of the Bemba people of Zambia. They dressed in European clothing, and would summon the headman to prepare a ritual meal for the village. When the villagers arrived they would view them all in a mirror, and claimed they could identify witches with this method. These witches would then have to yield up his horns, i.e. give over the horn containers for curses and evil potions to the witch finders. The Bamukapi then made all drink a potion called Kukapa which would cause a witch to die and swell up if he ever tried such things again. The villagers related that the witch finders were always right because the witches they found were always the people whom the village had feared all along. The Bamukapi utilized a mixture of Christian and native religious traditions to account for their powers and said that God, not specifying which God helped them to prepare their medicine. In addition, all witches who did not attend the meal to be identified would be called to account later on by their master, who had risen from the dead, and who would force the witches by means of drums to go to the graveyard, where they would die. Richards noted that the Bamukapi created the sense of danger in the villages by rounding up all the horns in the village, whether they were used for anti-witchcraft charms, potions, snuff or were indeed receptacles of black magic. The Bemba people believed misfortunes such as wardings, hauntings and famines to be just actions sanctioned by the high god Lisa. The only agency which caused unjust harm was a witch, who had enormous powers and was hard to detect. After white rule of Africa, beliefs in sorcery and witchcraft grew, possibly because of the social strain caused by new ideas, customs and laws, and also because the courts no longer allowed witches to be tried. Amongst the Bantu tribes of southern Africa, the witch smellers were responsible for detecting witches. In parts of southern Africa, several hundred people have been killed in witch hunts since 1990. Cameroon has re established witchcraft accusations in courts after its independence in 1967. It was reported on 21 May 2008 that in Kenya a mob had burnt to death at least 11 people accused of witchcraft. In March 2009, Amnesty International reported that up to 1,000 people in the Gambia had been abducted by government sponsored witch doctors 
on charges of witchcraft, and taken to detention centers where they were forced to drink poisonous concoctions. On 21 May 2009, The New York Times reported that the alleged witch-hunting campaign had been sparked by the Gambian president, Yahya Jama, in Sierra Leone. The witch-hunt is an occasion for a sermon by the Kamami native mend witch finder on social ethics. Witchcraft takes hold in people's lives when people are less than fully open-hearted. All wickedness is ultimately because people hate each other or are jealous or suspicious or afraid. These emotions and motivations cause people to act antisocially. The response by the populace to the Kamami is that, they valued his work and would learn the lessons he came to teach them, about social responsibility and cooperation. <laughs> South Central Asia In India, labeling a woman as a witch is a common ploy to grab land, settle scores or even to punish her for turning down sexual advances. In a majority of the cases, it is difficult for the accused woman to reach out for help and she is forced to either abandon her home and family or driven to commit suicide. Most cases are not documented because it is difficult for poor and illiterate women to travel from isolated regions to file police reports. Less than 2% of those accused of witch hunting are actually convicted, according to a study by the Free Legal Aid Committee, a group that works with victims in the state of Jharkhand. A 2010 estimate places the number of women killed as witches in India at between 150 and 200 per year, or a total of 2,500 in the period of 1995 to 2009. The lynchings are particularly common in the poor northern states of Jharkhand, Bihar and the central state of Chhattisgarh. Witch hunts are also taking place among the tea garden workers in Jalpaiguri, West Bengal, India. The witch hunts in Jalpaiguri are less known, but are motivated by the stress in the tea industry on the lives of the Adivasi workers. Witch hunts in Nepal are common, and are targeted especially against low caste women. The main causes of witchcraft related violence include widespread belief in superstition, lack of education, lack of public awareness, illiteracy, caste system, male domination, and economic dependency of women on men. The victims of this form of violence are often beaten, tortured, publicly humiliated, and murdered. Sometimes, the family members of the accused are also assaulted. In 2010, Sarwa Dev Prasad Ojha, Minister for Women and Social Welfare, said, Superstitions are deeply rooted in our society, and the belief in witchcraft is one of the worst forms of this. Topic: <inaudible> Papua New Guinea. Though the practice of white magic, such as faith healing, is legal in Papua New Guinea, the 1976 Sorcery Act imposed a penalty of up to two years in prison for the practice of black. Magic, until the act was repealed in 2013. In 2009, the government reports that extrajudicial torture and murder of alleged witches, usually lone women, are spreading from the highland areas to cities as villagers migrate to urban areas. For example, in June 2013, four women were accused of witchcraft because the family had a permanent house made of wood, and the family had tertiary educations and high social standing. All of the women were tortured and Helen Rumbali was beheaded. Helen Hakina, chairwoman of the North Bougainville Human Rights Committee, said that the accusations started because of economic jealousy born of a mining boom. Reports by UN agencies, Amnesty International, Oxfam and anthropologists show that attacks on accused sorcerers and witches, sometimes men, but most commonly women, are frequent, ferocious and often fatal. It's estimated about 150 cases of violence and killings are occurring each year in just the province of Simbu in Papua New Guinea alone. Reports indicate this practice of witch hunting has in some places evolved into something more malignant, sadistic and voyeuristic. One woman who was attacked by young men from a nearby village had her genitals burned and fused beyond functional repair by the repeated intrusions of red-hot irons. Few incidents are ever reported, according to the 2012 Law Reform Commission which concluded that they have increased since the 1980s. <inaudible> <inaudible> South Arabia Witchcraft or sorcery remains a criminal offense in Saudi Arabia, although the precise nature of the crime is undefined, the frequency of prosecutions for this in the country as whole is unknown. 
However, in November 2009, it was reported that 118 persons had been arrested in the province of Maka that year for practicing magic and using the Book of Allah in a derogatory manner, 74% of them being female. According to Human Rights Watch in 2009, prosecutions for witchcraft and sorcery are proliferating and Saudi courts are sanctioning a literal witch hunt by the religious police. In 2006, an illiterate Saudi woman, Faza Fala, was convicted of practicing witchcraft, including casting an impotent spell, and sentenced to death by beheading, after allegedly being beaten and forced to fingerprint a false confession that had not been read to her. After an appeal court had cast doubt on the validity of the death sentence because the confession had been retracted, the lower court reaffirmed the same sentence on a different basis. In 2007, Mustafa Ibrahim, an Egyptian national, was executed, having been convicted of using sorcery in an attempt to separate a married couple, as well as of adultery and of desecrating the Quran. Also in 2007, Abdul Hamid bin Hussein bin Mustafa al Faki, a Sudanese national, was sentenced to death after being convicted of producing a spell that would lead to the reconciliation of a divorced couple. In 2009, Ali Sibat, a Lebanese television presenter who had been arrested whilst on a pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia, was sentenced to death for witchcraft arising out of his fortune telling on an Arab satellite channel. His appeal was accepted by one court, but a second in Medina upheld his death sentence again in March 2010, stating that he deserved it as he had publicly practiced sorcery in front of millions of viewers for several years. In November 2010, the Supreme Court refused to ratify the death sentence, stating that there was insufficient evidence that his actions had harmed others. On the 12th of December 2011, Amina bint Abdul Halim Nasser was beheaded in Al Jaf province after being convicted of practicing witchcraft and sorcery. Another very similar situation occurred to Marie bin Ali bin Isa al Asira, and he was beheaded on the 19th of June 2012 in the Najran province. Topic. ISIS Islamic State On 29 and the 30th of June 2015 militants of the radical Islam terrorist group Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant ISIL or ISIS beheaded two couples on accusations of sorcery and using magic for medicine in Deir ez zor province of the self-proclaimed Islamic State Earlier on the ISIL militants beheaded several magicians and street illusionists in Syria, Iraq and Libya. Topic figurative use of the term Western media frequently write of a Stalinist witch hunt or a McCarthyite witch hunt. In these cases, the word witch hunt is used as a metaphor to illustrate the brutal and ruthless way in which political opponents are denigrated and persecuted. Topic list Salem Witch Trials Basque Witch Trials Bideford Witch Trial North Berwick Witch Trials Ramsell Witch Trial St. Osythe Witches Torsaker Witch Trials Würzburg Witch Trial The Witch Trials of Vardo were held in Vardo, Finnmark, Norway in the winter of 1662-1663 and were one of the biggest in Scandinavia. Topic see also topic References topic Notes topic Citations topic Further reading Andreasen, Reden Laura and Liv Helena Willemsen eds, Stylenset Memorial. Art Architecture History. Stamsund, Orkana, 2014. ISBN 978-82-8104-245-2 Beringer, Wolfgang. Witches and Witch Hunts, A Global History. Malden, Massachusetts, Polity Press, 2004. Briggs, Robin, Many Reasons Why, Witchcraft and the Problem of Multiple Explanation, in Witchcraft in Early Modern Europe. Studies in Culture and Belief, ed. Jonathan Berry, Marianne Hester, and Gareth Roberts, Cambridge University Press, 1996. Burns, William E. Witch Hunts in Europe and America, an Encyclopedia, 2003, Cohn, Norman. Europe's Inner Demons, an enquiry inspired by the Great Witch Hunt 1975, revised edition, Europe's Inner Demons, the demonization of Christians in medieval Christendom, Chicago, the University of Chicago Press, 1993. Dorant, Jonathan B. Witchcraft, Gender, and Society in Early Modern Germany, Leiden, Brill, 2007. Golden, William, ed. Encyclopedia of Witchcraft, The Western Tradition 4 Vol. 2006 1270 pp. 758 short essays by scholars. Good, Eric, Ben Yahuda, Nachman 1994. Moral Panics, The Social Construction of Deviance. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Wiley Blackwell. ISBN 0-631-18905-X. 
Gouges, Linnea de, Witch Hunts and State Building in Early Modern Europe 2018, Clates, Joseph. Servants of Satan, The Age of the Witch Hunts. Bloomington, Indiana University Press, 1985 Levick, Brian P. The Great Scottish Witch Hunt of 1661-1662, The Journal of British Studies, Vol. 20, No. 1. Autumn, 1980, pp. 90-108. Levick, Brian P. The Witch Hunt in Early Modern Europe, 3rd edition. London and New York, Longman, 2006. McFarlane, Allen. Witchcraft in Tudor and Stuart England, a Regional and Comparative Study. New York and Evanston, Harper and Row Publishers, 1970. Middleford, Eric H. C. Witch Hunting in Southeastern Germany 1562-1684, The Social and Intellectual Foundation. California, Stanford University Press, 1972. ISBN 0-8047-0805-3 Monter, William 1972. The Historiography of European Witchcraft, Progress and Prospect. Journal of Interdisciplinary History, 2-435-451. doi, 10.2307-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1